what are some of the like, especially being self-published, what are some challenges you face with that? Um, is there, you know, how do you fight through things like distraction, staying focused, you know, getting into that kind so of stuff? <laughs> are we all? <laughs> I think it might be an artist creative thing to be easily distracted. Um, I mean, I think with indie publishing, it's probably primarily the getting seen, advertising, mm -hmm. marketing, that kind of thing. Still haven't cracked that one. I don't know if anyone but has. I, I feel like I've seen people who have, but it sounds like a full-time job. And I'm just like, how do you have time to write? Yeah. <laughs> and doing all that. So that's probably the biggest struggle I have. Um, yeah, consistency. Like, I'm not one of those people that can write every single day. Mm -hmm. I get creative burnout, so I have to switch to something else. Usually I'll toggle between, like, writing and art. Mm -hmm. So it's different creative outlets. So it's I, my writer brain can recharge while I'm doing art. So Yeah, yeah, I like that. I think you always hear, you know, if you if you just like Google writing advice, mm -hmm. probably the number one thing you see is write every day. And <laughs> I think that it's mostly good advice, but I don't think it works for everyone. And, you know, I when I yeah. first started writing, I heard that and I was like, I'm going to write every day. And I went into it and did the whole thing. And then I like that just doesn't really work with life a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, also just like when I've tried to if I have an art project that has a deadline and I have to work on it every single day The I, I can see my art taking a toll. Like it doesn't mm. come out as good. Every, yeah. Like every day it's getting a little bit worse and I need to take breaks because it's, yeah. And I think I can definitely see that with my writing too. If I, if I try to write every single day, it's not going to be as good. And then it's just more clean up later. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, definitely. And even time, like, I find that I do better with short little yeah. um, 15 to 45 minute spurts. spurts and if I yeah. start getting like past an hour, I'm just like forcing myself to, and then it just starts turning to crap and it's no I good. I think I have, I take a little while to get into it. So I'm more like an hour window, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's like, it takes a little while to get my feet, but yeah. Yeah. No, I it's, I, I just like, spurts. cause I hear, you know, I just like hearing that it kind of there's the conventional wisdom out there and then yeah. most people are like that eh, doesn't really work in the real world yeah the people yeah. who actually are doing the writing are kind of like eh. yeah I'm sure about i'm that the one. same too i have a lot i have other creative interests too so i get kind of bored with one type and then i yeah over, you know my wife calls it creative add that's you know I, yeah. I definitely think I have that. <laughs> yeah. So how, so when you do sit down to write, do you have any kind of um, methods for keeping yourself on track with the story to, to like remind yourself of where you were to, to like. Um, I'll often, after doing a writing session, I'll often sort of bullet point these are the next things that I want to happen in the next scene just mm -hmm. to sort of, you know, I'm, I'm tired. I'm not, I'm not up to writing actual prose, but I know what needs to happen next. And so it's a, it helps me pick up when I get back into it. Cause I just read my bullet points and mm -hmm. know what the next scene consists of. That's yeah. helped. I don't always do that, but that one, that definitely helps me get into it a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Um, Kind of thing. I I've known people who they'll like read their last chapter or their last scene to mm -hmm. orient themselves. I I don't think I've ever really done that. I might read like a couple paragraphs to see where I was, but I can I usually kind of remember what's happened. I don't know and if I generally have the time to do that. Like like read the whole chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm gonna go I'm, read the I'd whole take thing. Most of my writing time reading. If I did. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because that's. You know, I always end up, I only maybe have like a half an hour. I'm yeah. Squeeze it in real quick at one time. And then I'm like, I, don't, I can't read what I had before. <laughs> yeah. But, um. Do you. Let me think. Do you. So like I've read this about Brandon Sanderson. 
where mm-hmm. he will like write a whole character's story like he'll write that whole point of view and then he'll go mm-hmm. to the next point of view and write that oh for like multiple and then he, plots. yeah and yeah. then he'll like put it all together later mm-hmm. do you like write more linearly do you have something like that where you do a different process um, or most of the stuff i've written so far hasn't really had the interwoven plot lines quite like that so um the book that i I'm currently working on just finished writing the whole thing. It's being edited. Um, that one has like two threads to it. And I kind of, I just w- wrote it as the scenes happened. I didn't like write one and then write the other. Mm-hmm. So, but I can imagine that would be helpful if you're doing really complex plots, especially if they're not too interconnected mm-hmm. because then, Yeah. If if it's interconnected, I feel like I would have to write them back and forth to um, make sure things aligned. Yeah, um, or maybe it's like if they're interconnected, but like on a bigger scale, mm-hmm. then maybe it'd be fine to write them without going back and forth. But if they're like I mean, scene maybe by you scene, plotted it out ahead of time. Yeah, then you can write one and write the other. Um, I'm working on a kind of novella that's dual perspectives and each chapter it switches. Mm-hmm. And at first I was having trouble toggling because they're two distinct voices. Mm-hmm. Um, but I very quickly realized I couldn't um, write one and then write the other because it's like directly interconnected. It's like an event happens and you get both their perspectives back and forth. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that it's it's hard to toggle the voice back and forth like that, but certain stories I think you kind of have to. Mm-hmm. And then you can just go through and once you've written it, go through the, you know, one side and make sure the voice is consistent and then go through the other and make sure it's cuz I mean, you know, you can fix that stuff in editing a lot of the time, so. Yeah. Is that do you find it hard to create unique character voices or is that to come pretty easy to you um, or think so i i don't yeah i don't usually have trouble with that um there was there was a couple of times where i had to sort of shift dialogue to different characters in my first novel where it's like okay that character wouldn't necessarily know that information this other person would have to say it and then i'd have to rewrite the whole like line to make it in their voice but so there was a little bit of getting the voices confused because i was switching stuff around in edits but yeah no not usually Mm -hmm. um sometimes i'll struggle with it a bit when i'm sort of first writing the first draft because you're kind of getting to know the characters and you're getting to know their voices but once once you've written the whole thing you know them by the end and then you can go and clean it up in edits yeah i find that when i write like a first draft of something it's like i kind of fall more into like cliche stuff so like if i'm writing like um something with like elves and dwarves and humans Mm -hmm. it's like the dwarves sound like scotsman yeah like how you'd imagine they would and elves sound like tolkien elves and and then you kind of like i you know as you go through it again i'm like okay this can't sound exactly like you know this (laughs) but it's a good fallback when you're still kind of figuring out yeah what it is and all that stuff i've done a little bit of because a lot of people will do complex character studies, like they'll do a chart for every character. And sometimes I'll just do the character and then sort of like three or four words that describe their personality as a sort of reminder of what they're like. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you can easily create a really kind of cliche character doing that, but it's just sort of a thing to go back to, to remind you that these are some of their base traits that that helps affect how they talk and carry themselves and do things. I mean, you so obviously you find... want to know more than that, but it's just sort of a little reminder. Yeah. So do you find if on. you, if you get too in depth on a character study that it limits you or like, do you like to have um, a little freedom with it? Or do you want to know exactly who that character is? I usually like to sort of learn who the character is while writing the first draft. Mm-hmm. And then I'll write a bunch of what I've learned 
down in a chart so that I can reference it during editing. Yeah. Because if I, a lot of the time I've tried doing more in-depth characters before writing, and then it's sort of, I have to change things because the character isn't serving the story the way I need them to. And mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff that I already decided has to change for the story. And so they become slightly different than I anticipated them being. Yeah. So. I have um, some, like, I, generally what I'll do now, what I've been doing is I have some ideas of who I, who the character might be, but I definitely know what they have to be in the story. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times if I have that in mind, I can kind of eventually their personality starts to fit with what that needs to be. So it's kind mm -hmm. of like knowing the ending of the book. It's like if you yeah. know the beginning and the end, you can kind of figure out the middle. It's kind of like that, but just for the characters themselves. Yeah. 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 It's, I think it's good to have sort of a baseline, but be willing to change it. Yeah.